Welcome to a new video. If you have an old router or modem router at home and you're thinking of giving it away or throwing it away, don't do it without watching this video first because today I'm going to show you how to turn an old router or modem router into a Wi-Fi extender. Now, I want to clarify something. This device that I have here is a modern router. How do we know this? Because this device has a port here, which is the ADCL port, which is where the telephone line is connected. This equipment was used long ago when ADCL connections were used. Well, nowadays, fiber to the home connections are used, and obviously all the equipment that is normally used at home has had to be replaced. But this device, being very old and outdated, is no longer used as a main router in our network or in our home. So, what are we going to do today? We are going to use this equipment, especially since this port one. This port here is your port one, we cannot use it because we are not going to be making RJ11 connections. We are going to use one of the LAN ports of this equipment to connect it to our main router and in this way allow us to expand our Wi-Fi signal. The good thing about all this is that the addressing of our main network will automatically go through this equipment and will be propagated through this antenna. In other words, this will create its Wi-Fi cell. All the devices that connect to this equipment will continue to maintain the addressing of the main network. This is really something quite easy and simple to do. So today I am going to show you how to convert this equipment into a device that you can use today to be able to extend your Wi-Fi. Let's first configure it and then we'll go through the entire connection process. Okay, I'm already here in the device configuration. You can see that it's an ADCL2 router. The address of this device is 192.168.1.1. Obviously, I reset this device to factory settings. When I reset it to factory settings, it remains with its default IP address, which is this address here, 192.168.1.1. I simply enter that address into the browser or place it here in the browser and it will open the page or portal so you can log in. In this case, these devices are somewhat old. The username is Hackman and the password is Hackman to access it. I think it's unnecessary to explain how to access the device configuration, because that's something I've explained in many, many videos. We're not going to do anything here. In this case, some additional configurations. What we're going to do here are two configurations as such and they're here in interfaces. In interfaces, we're going to go here to WIR, in this case it would be the wireless network. And here we're going to place, we're going to enable the access point obviously and we're going to enable here. In this case we're selecting the country that in this case corresponds to you. We're leaving the channel as automatic. In this case, you can leave all these parameters like this. It may appear different on your device. I'm doing it on a modern router. I'll repeat, we can set the transmission power to high, medium or low, as you wish. Here the channel width or the channel bandwidth would be 20 to 40 MHz. We'll leave it like this. Here, it also obviously tells me if I want to configure multiple SSIDs. In this case, I'm going to leave it like this, just one. And here we can configure. Here is the SSID, which is the name of the device. And here in authentication we put a WIPA2 authentication. When selecting this, it will automatically ask us to indicate the type of encryption and here it tells us to enter the key that we are going to assign to this wireless network. Okay, that's it. Basically the configuration of a wireless network. Okay, remember that once the configuration is complete, here we click on save. Okay, one of the most important configurations that we have to do here, well, this one is really important, but the most important one is here in the LAN interface. In the LAN interface, we have DHCP here. Notice that DHCP is enabled by default. DHCP is the protocol that normally assigns us IP addresses dynamically. This means that we are not usually configuring IP addresses to all devices manually. So, what happens? We have to change the DHCP to a DHCP relay. Like this, DHCP relay. You have to look for that option on your device. If it's a modem router, you should have this setting enabled or to enable it, which is the DHCP relay. What DHCP does is it acts as a switch so that all the addresses of the main router automatically pass to the secondary router and go to the devices that are connected to that Wi-Fi network. 
even if you have a completely different name and a completely different password on the second Wi-Fi network, the addresses that the device is going to assign are going to be the same addresses or the same network segment that the main router has. In that way, when you connect to the secondary router, in this case to this modem router, you will be able to access the configuration of your main router, whether you are connected to this modem router or to Wi-Fi network number 2 or to the second Wi-Fi network. So, what we have to do here is enter the gateway of the main router. The gateway of a device is this address, for example, that I placed here in the browser. The address that you use to access your device's configuration is the gateway or GWI. Now, this gateway that we are going to place here on this device is the gateway of the main router. Okay, now what I am going to do is after enabling this, I am going to save the configuration and now we are going to make the connection to then see the results. Okay, the connection that we have to make here is quite simple. This is my main router, this one here which is a Lindsay's, and this is the secondary router. This router here, I am connecting a cable to a LAN port. As I told you in the previous section, remember that port 1 of this device is an ADCL port. Obviously, it is an RJ11. We are not going to use that port, we are going to use a LAN port. Any of the ports can be used. We place the cable here and simply take it to the LAN port of the device. This cable here is the internet port. It's port 1 of my Lindsay's router and obviously this is the LAN port. Well, it has several ports, as you can see there. Look, it has several ports. I'm placing it in port 1 and I'm taking it here to a port on the secondary router. That's all the configuration we have to do here. And there's something you have to take into account in all this. This cable that you're seeing here is obviously a short cable. In your case, that cable could be 20 meters long. That 20 meters length will obviously allow the secondary device to be much further away from the main device and in that way the Wi-Fi network can be extended or rather the Wi-Fi network of this secondary device can be extended much further. This usually applies a lot to those homes that usually have floors, for example, ground floor and upper floor. If the main router, which is usually always placed on the ground floor, should be placed a secondary router on the upper floor. Okay, another reason why I'm making this video is so that you can see and verify that this equipment, as you can see here, these modern old routers with a DCL ports, can be used to extend our Wi-Fi signal. Obviously, we extend it through a UTP cable, right? Which is this cable here. But the good thing about all this is that we can still use it and we can also retransmit our main network. Okay, now I'm going to perform the test so that you can see how it is, how everything looks and so that you can see that the equipment connects normally. Okay, see how here I am connected to my main Wi-Fi. See that it has already connected to the TPLIN, to the secondary one. There it has already connected. It says that it is connected. See that there I already have access to the internet without any problems. There it is. And I am connected to the TPLIN, 